Welcome back everybody. We are back in our little home program um, for you to do whilst you're still on lockdown. And um, we're going to do something that's never been done before, which is uh, convert the aqua class into a land-based class, which is undoable. But anyway, we've done our best. So um, let me just give you some background before we continue. I'd like to introduce Maria Aitken. Maria is part of our hydrotherapy class, and she's agreed to be a guinea pig. Now, Maria hasn't done these classes before, neither will any of you have done them, and that's exactly what we need, someone who's a novice, so we can correct her if needs be. And my name's Jane Simons. So, what we're going to do now is try and do some of the exercises that we do in the water, but I'd also like to say there's some elements that we are bringing into this session, and that is, the first thing is that the buoyancy of the water, which helps you with balance, is no longer there. So now we have to focus more on our balance. And your balance center is in your thinking, it's in your thinking, okay? So when I um, try to balance, I need to understand where is my center of gravity? How do I do it? What do I do? What am I doing? Where is my balance? Do I feel centered? Do I feel safe? So, you know, it's all of that. Okay, and then the resistance that the water actually provides, which is really good when we use the, the noodles and the dumbbells, we're going to use our own body weight. So when you're in the water, you don't get the benefit of that, but now on dry land we do, and that will replicate the resistance of the water, um, the, the dumbbells and the noodles. So that's basically what we're doing. Now, the exercises we're doing, we need to do them slowly because we need to be in control. We need to know that we are not overbalancing and we know which muscles we are using. So there's no point in rushing through an exercise and say, okay, let's do 20 of these and 20 of those. How you do an exercise makes all the difference. It's not what you do, but how you do it. So we really need to do it slowly. If any of you have um, any musculoskeletal issues, I've got a list of precautions that will follow at the end of this video. Please be sure to look at that list of precautions because um, we can't protect you in your home. What we're doing here is pretty safe, but I want you to take charge, be responsible, read the precautions and know what you can and cannot do. And if at any time you feel any discomfort, please just stop um, you can pause and restart or just abandon the, the exercise. The other thing is that everybody works at a different pace and a different range of movement. So when I ask people to say, for instance, when we do the standing and lifting your leg up and down, which we do in the water, some of you will say, well, I can only go that far. Well, that's fine. You do what you can do, okay? You don't have to do the biggest and the best. You do what you are capable of, and the more you practice with what you are capable of, you will get better at it. So it's like every, every discipline, every skill, the more you practice, the better you become. And if, you've got to want, if you want to reach your personal best, you've got to keep at it. Okay. So um, let's uh, begin the exercise session. Okay, so the first session we're going to do, we do it sitting in a chair so that you feel you don't need to worry too much about your balance and you can concentrate on the movement. So, I'd just like to say that we are going to use weights and I am the world's best recycler and I have used, so <coughs> both Maria and I, we're going to use our recycled milk bottles and I filled them with coloured water so you can see there's water in there. So let's um, sit ourselves down. So you're going to sit yourself down into the chair. Make sure that you sit relatively close to the edge of the chair. You can rest the, your weights on your knees to begin with. And just remember that when you're in a sit position, if you're not loading the front of your foot and using your feet, then all your weight is at the back, okay? So that's not what we want. I want you to sit forwards. It's not easy to sit forwards, it's not easy to have your best posture, but that's really what we're trying for. So you want to stretch as tall as you can, and when you stretch tall, you are engaging. So I'm going to use a really um, 
pathetic little uh, analogy and we're going to talk about pelvic lockdown. So pelvic lockdown means you're going to really work with your pelvic muscles to support the pelvis, which in turn will support the spine, okay? So if you watch me, I'm going to show you what is good and what is bad. So I'm going to now go into really bad posture. So Maria, if you want to join in, you don't have to. You can really sink down and say, okay, I'm just sitting here and I'm waiting for something to happen. Okay, I've got no control, no posture, no pelvic lockdown. Okay, so I want you to now stretch tall, stretch tall. Feel your tummy, feel your back, feel the weight bearing into your feet. And now I am set and prepared and ready. And when I exercise, I am in a protected position. So leaning forwards with your weight into your feet, you're going to lift your weights out to the front. And we're going to just simply lift one leg up, rock back and down. And we do this slowly because as you do this slowly, holding those weights out is not easy. But I've got enough time to recognize that my tummy is doing the work. My tummy is helping me. My tummy, my back, my buttock muscles. I press through the opposite foot. So the opposite foot is helping me. You don't work in isolation. You don't lift one leg and ignore the other one. So the other leg is helping me push down. So as I lift up and down, and doing it as slowly as you can. So as you do it really slowly, there's enough time for you to feel that your tummy and your back and your quad muscles are all joining in. So well done. So that's looking pretty good. So it's hard work. So I'm just going to get Maria to put your weights down, just on your knees, Maria, just to give you a little moment of rest. Okay, now the next one is rowing the boat. So we start with your feet forwards, maybe close your knees so that you can really lock up your legs and lock up your pelvis. So we're going to reach forwards and we pull those oars back and we rock back to feel your tummy and you go forward. So I'm moving at the hip, push down into your feet, feel your quads, feel your tummy, feel your back, leaning backwards, rocking forwards and I can feel my back and when I go back I feel my tummy, 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 tummy as I go backwards, leaning forwards, weights go down and up. So we do it nice and slowly. So what we're going to do now Maria is reverse it. Let's go back the other way. So you're going to go down and bring those weights. So Maria's doing really well. She hasn't done these before. Now I notice that Maria's got um, quite a sway back, so I'm going to ask her to really tighten her tummy. So the more you tighten your tummy, this is about protecting your back. So the main um, protection for the spine is the tummy, and that is needs to be turned on as much as you can. So you can feel that, Maria? Yes, I can. And it's quite hard work, yeah? Yes, it is. Okay, all right, so let's rest the, um, rest the, uh, the weights on your knees. So I'm just apologizing for using the uh, computer. Um, <clears throat> this is not a class that I normally do, so I have to refer to my um, my notes because I'm not, it's not that I've done this all that often. But I have tried to research it as much as possible to make sure that we're not doing anything wrong. Okay, so now you're going to keep sitting, you're going to lift your weights up and we're going to turn your head, turn your ribs, turn your pelvis, and then come back to the front. And turn, and turn, and turn, and come back to the front. So when we do this in the water, where you're pushing against the water, you're pushing against a resistance. So we replicate that resistance with the weights, and we push and we turn. So, you know, in the class in the water, I keep talking about tummy, back, pelvic floor. Feel your anchoring with your tummy, with your back, with your pelvic floor. And we'll do one more, turning and rotating. Feel your feet, push your feet down, and then come back to the start position and just have 
a moment of rest. Okay. All right. So we're going to now uh, just pop the weights down. So just pop them down by your side. Now this one is uh, taking up the weight of your legs. So remember, when you're in the water, the, the buoyancy is helpful. We don't have that buoyancy, so now we want to use our muscles. So we're going to have hands out in front, elbows a little bit bent. So you're going to straighten one leg and tap it with the opposite hand. Opposite hand, just tap just with one hand. That's it, and good. So now, um, I don't know whether Maria can see this, I'm taking my other hand out to the side for balance. So when you're in the water, you don't need to bother with balance because the water is balancing you. So as you go forwards and backwards, you need this outside hand to be your balancing hand. And when you do that, this is how you find your balance. So leaning backwards and tapping. Now I'm getting a bit better at this, so I'm going to now lean and try and go as far forwards as I can to go towards my foot. And I'm leaning and trying to go forwards towards my foot. And as I alternate, I am stretching around the rib cage. I'm using my arms. My quads are working super hard. Do you agree with that, Maria? Yeah, I do agree, yes. <laughs> Poor Maria, she'll never walk again. Is that, no, just joking, just joking. <laughs> Maria hasn't done anything like all of us for such a long time. So I'm just making her work really hard, but she'll be fine. So, and back. Okay, so have a little rest. So when you slow it down, you've got enough time to appreciate how heavy your legs are. You don't appreciate that in the water. You're getting the buoyancy of the water helping you, but we are just trying to make up for that. Okay, so now this is your classic swimming movement. So let's have our feet forwards, a little bit forwards, and we're going to start with your hands way forwards, and you bring one hand down and you turn as if you're taking in air, and you push forwards and take that hand down to the other side and push forwards. And then you can speed it up if you like. But all the time I'm doing this, my feet, my legs, my quads, my buttocks, my back, my tummy, my inside thigh, my pelvic floor, I'm working everywhere in my body as I turn and I turn and rotate. So it's a beautiful movement as you turn and rotate. Okay. Okay, and you can bring your hands down. All right, so still sitting in the chair, we're going to do a little, um, it's hard work this, it's hovering over the chair. So I do recommend that you use the side, the, the arms of the chair, because not everybody can stand up and sit down without using their hands. This is not um, essential, but you know, if you can, it's wonderful. So I'm going to stand up, but I'm not going to go all the way up. I push into my hands, push into your feet, lean, fold at the hips, push into your feet, use your bottom, and then just hover. Lift your head up. If you need to keep your hands where they are, you can. Otherwise, bring them forwards and just hovering. So lift your head up a little bit and just knowing. So this is that hovering position, which is so powerful for the quads, the tummy, the butt, the major muscle groups. So the longer you can stay there, the better it is. So some of you might say, I can't anymore. So don't put your hands back on the chair. Make sure that you've got the chair there. Lower yourself slowly. So Maria, you can sit yourself down slowly, slowly. The slower you go, the more muscles you use. So that's what our muscles are for, to protect us so that we don't thump down, okay? So we're going to do that just one more time. Maybe tuck your feet a little bit further back so you will find, depending on the range of movement of your knees and your hips, if you need to have your feet further back. And some people actually prefer to have one foot back, one foot forwards. That can also give you a bit of extra stability. So let's go again. Lean into your feet, feel your feet, push into your feet, squeeze your bottom, you can use your hands, and then you can come up 
and reach those arms forwards and breathe and stay there. So that hovering position is a build-up of power for the quads, hamstrings, buttock, tummy, hold, breathe, stay, lifting your head. So I'm sure you're finding that's uh, hard work. So I'm just going to be kind to Maria because she hasn't exercised for a while like all of you. So let's sit back down, slowly hold the arms of the chair so when you sit back down, you are safe. Distant. Does that mess things up? No, that's okay. fine. Okay, so Maria, you're holding on with your uh, right, your left hand. So, what I want you to do now, and if you want to hold the back of the chair this way, that way, or if you feel safer, it's perfectly fine to turn the back of the chair that way. So Maria's got it this way, I've turned it this way, you have the option. Okay, so I'm now going to tip at the hip. I'm going to take my leg back and behind me. And I'm going to reach my hand forwards, and now I'm going to do 20 pulses. So up, 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 and I'm going to count, I don't, I'm not very good at counting, so I'm just going to keep doing this. But what I want you to feel is the knee is bent, the hip is bent, the buttocks are working, the leg that's lifted up and, and back and behind you, the butt muscles are working super, super hard. Your shoulder is working. Now, as you do this, if you feel that you don't need to balance so much, you can take your weight out of the hand and just use fingertip control or if at any time you feel you're able to, you can take your hands away, but that's a bit hard. Okay, so now we're going to do the other side. So um, I'm just going to turn around with my back to you and um, yeah, maybe swivel your chair and do the other leg. So there we go. So I'm doing the other leg. So I'm now standing on my left leg. I'm going to go up, 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 holding your head, head up so that your head's not sagging down. So if you can only do um, 10, that's okay. If you can do 20, that's the intention. So you want to try and be able to do those repetitions. Up, down, up, down, up, down. So it's really hard work in the butt, both butt muscles. Okay, all right, so, and down. So. I'm not very good at counting, it could have been 20, but approximately. Now we're going to do same side, which is balance. So I'm going to stand, and uh, no, I have to do it this side, I have to work this one out. So standing on this leg, and I'm going same side, so right arm and right leg. So for some reason, this is a balance exercise, and if you feel that you can, you can, see I've lost my balance, so I need the chair. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. Without your waist, you can't do this exercise without your waist. In other words, your core muscles. So, this is quite difficult. Okay, all right, so let's turn around and do the other side. So Maria's telling you and me that that's enough, so let's do the other side. So. So up, down, up, down, up, down. So you can feel the buttock, the shoulder. And if you feel competent, you can have no hands if you like. Um, it really can be one finger control, but it's really hard work, yeah? Yeah, very hard. Okay, okay, all right, so we can stop. I need practice so, for that one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so that was, uh, really uh, quite hard. Now, we're going to do the classic, the plank that you do do in the water. Now, I'm going to turn my um, chair sideways. So, yeah, you can do the sideways too, Maria. So, doing the plank in standing on a chair is doable. So, what I'm going to do, I'm going to bend at the hips. I'm going to put my hands on the chair, hold the back of the chair. I'm going to walk my feet back. And um, I'm going to sort of get a sense that my... Are you okay, Maria? Yes, I'm fine. Thanks, Jen. So she's using, holding the back of the chair, which is excellent. We can push down. Shoulders, 
hips, ankles, all in the same straight line. So we want to stay here for 60 seconds. Now Maria, if you can't, you stand up any time that you don't want to continue. So pushing through elbows, push through hands, lift your head, feel your tummy, feel your back, feel your buttocks, feel your legs, and we're going to just stay there. Now if you need to stop, please stop now, have a rest. If you can keep going, keep going. Now the easy version of the plank is to have your bottom up high in the air, so you could do that. Have your bottom right up in the air, that's much easier. So if you prefer to do that, that's okay. And then as you get stronger, you slowly bring it down to the point and you're stretching those toes. And I think that's approximately 60 seconds. So walk out of it, one knee bent, push, push, and push yourself up. Okay, so that was pretty hard, hard work. So, um, that's how you can uh, do the plank. All right, now we have done this one so many times in the pool, it's about this muscle here, the front of your shin, okay? Which pulls your feet up and the design, so let's do this penguin walking. So we can just wander around or stay in the same spot. So when you walk on your heels, it does look a bit like a penguin, but the idea is that if you can hold it up, hold your feet up for about 60 seconds, you really are working with the one muscle that picks your feet up and hopefully will uh, manage you, your loss of balance and you know maybe when you are walking down the street and you lose your balance momentarily, you can quickly lift your foot up and uh, save yourself from tripping over your own feet. So we all know how not to fall but we do, we do fall because either the muscle isn't strong or our response time isn't good enough. Okay, so by now you can really feel, okay, so Maria stops. Okay, that's okay, she stopped. But you can all start to feel these muscles here are really sore. And I know those of you who come to the pool, you often tell me that that's what you feel. But now that you do it on dry Rock land, heels. <laughs> yeah, if you do it with heels on, even harder. But yeah, so... Um, Yes, yeah, so we just want to practice that. Now the next one is response time. Now you've heard me talk about this incessantly. So Maria knows what to do. Um, one, two, three, four, back, two, three, four. So this is um, training the response of picking up your feet. So one of the things that we know as aging adults the neuromuscular connections and neurotransmission from brain to muscle slows down. So we know that. So let's try and work with stuff that we know and just keep strong. So a pianist who practices piano, uh, playing the piano lifelong never loses the, the skill. So we need to be responsive. And this is why we do this. So you can feel the hips and you're feeling it already yes. and it's hard work because I'm picking up my feet and moving sideways. So this is the design of the Falls Prevention Program. Lift your feet, yep. be responsive. Okay, very good. So, whew, okay, so let's just catch the breath. Okay, so this is an exercise everybody's very familiar with in the pool, you're pushing the noodle down. So standing on one leg, you push down and lift up. Now because you are pushing down against the resistance of the water, I need you to feel your core muscles holding that leg. Use your chair for balance. So Maria's got the chair there lifting. Now Maria, I do want you to turn your knee out. So maybe Maria, move to the side of the chair like I'm doing, move to the side so that you turn the knee out. That's great, that's good. So turn the knee out. So turning the knee out really gets you to work with your butt muscles and you get the hip going and you're going up and down but the standing leg is working super hard and you, you hear me say this all the time in the pool. Standing leg is doing its contribution. The moving leg is doing its own thing. So as you go up and down, feel your butt, very good. Now we're going to swap and do the other leg. If you can just um, hold on to the chair and 
do the other leg up and down. So you can bend the knee a little bit, bend the hip a little bit as you're going up and down and up and down and up and down. As you're going up and down, you feel the weight of your leg. one is what we call a swimming exercise, a bird, bird flapping its wings. So coming up onto your toes and down. Now I want you to raise your arms and turn at the same time and down. And raise your arms and turn at the same time and down and turn. So this is all very good stuff for the feet. Lots of strengthening in the feet and turning at the same time, balancing. So I'm very aware of balancing as you come up and down and up and down. So you might find yourself Losing your balance, but that's okay, this will get better the more we practice it. Okay. Okay, so we've done the bird, so now I'd like you to put your palms of your hands together and um, we're going to, I'm going to turn sideways on so you can see my thumb is touching my nose and then I'll come back to the front. Now I'm going to tip over to the side as far as I can and then I come upright and I tip over. Now the reason why you keep your thumb on your nose is that you want your head to move at the same rate as your rib cage. Now this is the easy version where you have your elbows open. So as I go from side to side, my, my pelvic muscles are working super hard. Tummy back, pelvic floor, legs, buttocks. Now I'm going to make it harder. So Maria, can you close your elbows? If you can't, then don't. With elbows closed, it's really much harder. So I'm going to bend at the hips and tip and come upright. So when I say bend at the hips, a little bit of bend at the hips and turn to the side and upright. So this is really hard work. Tip and upright and tip to the side slowly as you come up and tip and up. And last one, tipping and up. Okay, so bring your hands down. Now we're going to grab our weights again. So Maria, here's your second weight. Now this is an exercise that we do in the pool with the dumbbells. Holding your weights, so you've got two dumbbells. You're going to roll them forwards, down, bend the knees up. And roll forwards, breathing. So this is the last one for Maria, so she knows that she's <laughs> We're going to end up with some stretches. So bend at the hips, feel your tummy, feel your back. When you use dumbbells in the water, you push down. And you need your tummy to help push down. And we need our tummy exactly the same way with the weights. Let's reverse it, go back the other way. Push your bottom out, fold at the hips, up and back. And fold at the hips, up and back and bend at the hips so your knees your legs your buttocks so one more bend and up and then you can just bring your arms down and step in and we can uh, finish with the stretches so um, 
let's just pop the weights down and we're going to just grab the chairs. I'll just get you to have your chair facing forwards. So we're using um, a scarf or a strap for this one. So we're going to sit. Now if you uh, can touch your foot that's great but most of us can't and we're stretching calf muscle and hamstring. So we're going to put the strap around the front of your foot and you're going to wriggle to the edge of the chair. Be safe, don't fall off the chair. And I want to bend forwards, keep the knee straight and you're going to pull that foot up and you can feel the stretch into your calf and into your hamstring. Breathe as you stretch. Now let's hold it. So if we can hold for the count of ideally 60 seconds, um, so leaning forwards, pull that leg up, feel the stretch into the back of your hamstring. So the knee is straight, this other leg here is helping me. So if you were able to hold your foot, you could, but if you can't, you use a strap. Keep the knee straight and bend and feel that stretch. So we want to just keep it up for a few more seconds because ideally we want to hold it. So there's no need to rush through stretches. They do need time to lengthen the tight muscles. Okay, so let's come up into the sit position and swap and put the strap under your foot if you can or if you don't need a strap you can just hold your foot so i've got one hand here holding my foot and i'm going to lean at the hip so when i bend at the hip i am getting the stretch at the back of the hamstring knee straight hold breathe stay hold 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 So this is how you can do hamstring and, and calf stretches safely sitting on a chair. Obviously there's lots of different positions you can do hamstring and calf muscle stretch, but we're just trying to be extra safe and careful. Okay, so you all right with that, Maria? That's good. Okay, so you can feel it at the yeah. back of the calf, yeah. back of the thigh, and try to bend at the hip, keep your back as straight as possible. So, so holding it. Breathe, hold, stay, stretch. Okay, so I'm not sure if that was exactly 60 seconds, but approximately. Now we want to do the quad stretch. So I'm going to turn slightly sideways on. If you can grab your ankle, that's fine. If you need a strap, that's also fine. So to get to my ankle, I bend my knee up, grab the ankle, pull the knee down and back and stretch tall, as tall as you can. So when you stretch tall, you get what we call groin stretch. So we're stretching into this region here, the groin and the knee, the kneecap sits in the tendon of the quad muscle, so you want to be able to feel the stretch around the kneecap, below the kneecap, above the kneecap, breathe, hold, stay, stretching, stretching, breathing, holding. So if we can stay with that, again, try to, to approximately do 60 seconds, that will just give you some lengthening. And the quad muscle is one of the first muscles to tighten and to weaken and I have been led to believe that an indicator of longevity is the strength of your quad muscles. So if your quad muscles are strong, you are more likely to be a walker and someone who gets up and down off the floor and in and out of a chair. So strong quads means a long life. Okay, let's do the other side. So it's normal, you've heard me say this a thousand times, the aging process shrinks muscles. So muscles shrink as we age and they weaken. 
So there's no point in strengthening a tight muscle. So you need to combine stretch with strengthening. So you can feel the groin stretch, bend that knee, and as I'm leaning into that foot, I can really take that leg out as much as I want, and it feels like it's a good stretch into the muscle belly, the muscle itself, and we're going to hold. And you are safe on a chair. You've got the chair to hold on to. And even if you can't bend all that much, so say for instance, you can only go to here, well that's okay. If you need to do your um, quad stretch with a strap, that's okay, you can do that, use a strap, doesn't matter. Just stretch the muscle, especially if you've had knee replacements, you want to keep that muscle elastic, and hip replacements as well. So Maria's doing a great job there, and okay, well done. So the last one is for the neck. So you know that I always finish with a neck stretch. Straightening, stretching as tall as you can. So if you like, you can put your hands behind the back of your head and stretch upwards. So I can dig my thumbs into the base of my skull, which is right next to my jaw, and I pull my head up as tall as I can. Feel the soft tissue at the back of the neck lengthening. Lengthening, lengthening, and it feels almost as if you're tractioning your neck, which is not a bad thing. So you can then bring your hands down by your side, and let's just turn and turn and turn and turn. So when you're turning, you are retracting your chin and turning and going as far as you can. Please don't be stingy with the turn. Big movement, as much as you can, hold stays. Strengthen, well, stretch the joint. Then return to the front position. Keep that chin tucked in and turning and turning and turning and turning. So with my chin tucked in, I can really feel that my neck is going as far as I can. Only you know how far your neck can rotate. So if you don't work with rotation, you will never know if you have full range or if you don't. So full range movement, you really need to check it out, test it out on a regular basis. Okay. Now, we're going to use the scarf or the strap for the last one, which is supporting the back of your neck. So I've got the strap behind my neck, and I'm now going to still stretch tall, and I'm going to pull my hands forward, support the back of my neck, and I'm going backwards as far as I can and going back, back. Now, if you have neck pain, holding with the strap will make it more comfortable. If you don't like to do this, don't do it. The lower you hold your strap, the more you are able to take your head back. But you know that the strap is giving you an isolated neck extension, and it's a, a, a really comfortable way to get your neck moving backwards, because necks do that. So that's what necks are supposed to do, moving backwards. Okay. So thank you, Maria. You did really well. Thank you. And thanks, everybody, for watching. And I hope that you try and practice some of these exercises. It's sort of what we do in the pool, maybe, maybe not, some of a few different exercises. But, you know, we don't know how much longer this is going to go on for, and it's up to you to keep your body going. So we are mechanical. I, I can't stop saying this. The human body is a mechanical instrument, and joints are mechanical muscles. Your electrical system from the brain to the muscles, everything needs to be worked. So well done, and thanks for listening.